Hello, this is Bishop, and this is a test of Autopilot version 8.1-2018-24112-DD-099. So, this release is the one that has given us the ability, at least for my car, to limit the speed of your car using the mobile app, and that was the main big feature enhancement that was specifically added. Uh, besides that, this is also the version that brought the UI change to change the steering wheel prompt to reflect more accurately uh, how the car detects whether or not your hands are on the steering wheel by telling you to apply light force to the steering wheel instead of just telling you to hold it, which was very confusing for people in the past. Since steering wheel detection was always based on torque, it was never based on the fact that your hands were physically on the wheel. All right, so we're going to our first part of our S-curve. First turn looks good. Second turn looks good. We'll go ahead and make our right and do our standard loop, moving on to some harder sections of road. See, so even though it's not very sunny today, I am catching us at a fairly traffic time of day, so unfortunately we don't have quite the wide open roads that we usually do. So besides those feature enhancements, um, haven't noticed a lot of significant differences in this particular version. Still no apparent speed limit sign detection. Um, cars now displaying adjacent lanes as they were in the previous version. However, um, they all are displaying as cars, regardless of uh, what type of vehicle it is, which is fine. You know, it's it was a, it was a minor cosmetic feature. It wasn't really something that was that big of a deal. One issue that I am experiencing with my car, which you might be able to hear on the audio, is my seat has begun to squeak. Um, the seat itself is not actually the source of the squeaking. It's the seat rubbing against the center console uh, from the slightest little bump in the road, which could be an indication that the seat is loose, but it's definitely an indication that the seat is too close to the center console. Um, by design of the Model S, it's basically rubbing. I mean, it's it's got very light contact with it, and as the seat starts to break in over time, um, that contact becomes more and more as the seat sort of flexes outwards a little bit. And that's the problem I'm experiencing right now. I actually have some felt tape on order uh, that I'm going to apply to the side to reduce the squeaking noise. If I stick a cloth in between the seat and the um, in the center console, then that eliminates the problem. It's just you know, squeak, squeak. Yeah, touching with that um, that leather part towards the top. So now I've engaged the autopilot. We're going over the railroad tracks. Hopefully, we will not trigger the G sensor on the camera. No, we did not. Good. No. There'll be a little bit less video splicing that I'll have to do later. The speed limit is detected as 35, bumps up to 40. Now that would look like speed limit sign detection, but it's just good GPS data. It just happens to be for this particular area. As I mentioned in previous videos, the uh, GPS information regarding speed limits on local roads has been significantly better since the navigation update for my car. Uh, it was slowly getting a little bit better before that, but um, yeah, pretty pretty noticeable difference once they release the navigation update. So now we're approaching a section where the road starts to get a little wonky. And car turns very assertively and then darts back into the lane. Perfect, exactly what I would hope to see. And traveling forward. Wider section of road. Car starts to swerve a little bit to the right to try to recenter against the larger section, but then it realizes that it's it's larger than a normal lane, so it just hugs the left-hand side, slowing down because of this uh, garbage truck. Now this will be something interesting. So once the truck has swerved away, the car speeding back up. Even though there is no car in the instrument cluster yet, and it just appeared, um, this is sort of in one of the things that reinforces the idea that what you see in the instrument cluster is not raw telemetry from the autopilot. It's just a, a friendly visual, oh, that's interesting, hello. It's just a friendly visual representation of some of the information that's being returned by the cameras and the radar and the ultrasonic sensors. So now that they have improved stopped car detection, um, you will see the car start to slow well before a car actually even pops up on the instrument cluster. So obviously, even though it doesn't show up in the instrument cluster, the car is detected. All right, let's watch this. And the car swerves over to the right to recenter it in the lane as it crosses through the intersection, which is very good. 
So as I was saying, the car is obviously detected even though it's not showing on the instrument cluster. So the instrument cluster is not your, you know, fighter pilot heads up display radar sort of thing, obviously. It's it's just a, a friendly graphic visualization for the driver of some of the information that's being returned by the various sensors that are being used by the autopilot system. Got the prompt for the steering wheel. Now, one thing that I've noticed, and I think that's what just happened in the intersection, and maybe, maybe my view is just obscured by the, um, by the recording rig, but occasionally um, I will get an instance where the autopilot will just tell me, and we go through this narrow section, it's always a little scary. All right, I hit the shoulder a little bit on that section, but that is a very narrow and very weird section of road. Uh, but as I was saying, um, what I have found will happen is occasionally the autopilot will, it'll skip the, the flashing prompt, or at least maybe I just, I mean, uh, no, I'm, I'm certain, in the instance that we just did, I wasn't certain as to whether or not I just didn't notice it, because the portion that flashes is kind of obscured by what my camera mount for the instrument cluster looks like, but I've definitely seen instances in which it goes straight to flashing, or sorry, go straight to the um, the steering wheel prompt, and it'll just all of a sudden say, hey, please grab the wheel right now. Um, I'm not sure what the criteria that causes that is. Um, the other thing that I have noticed with the autopilot that could definitely be a little bit better, and now I'm gonna disengage so we don't run the red light because it doesn't do that yet, um, is when the garbage truck had steered off, the car accelerated back up to a reasonable amount of speed pretty quickly, but it also started, it was going pretty slowly because we still had, all right, come on, get up there. Um, because we also had cars ahead of us at the intersection. One thing that I think it's a little bit laggy on is when a car, when you come to a complete stop and stop and go traffic or a car ahead of you is turning, so it comes to a complete stop to wait for its opportunity to turn. Once the car turns and it leaves your lane, I feel like the car is a little bit slow getting back up to normal speed. It, it still responds and it still does what it's supposed to do, but a driver behind you might think that you're being a little bit inattentive or driving unnecessarily slowly and somebody might get a little bit impatient and honk if you leave the car to its own devices at all time. So here the speed limit drops to 25. Let's see if it updates. Uh, no, it did not. Yep, GPS data is not that great. So I'm gonna drop my speed to 30 so that we're not speeding through here. And then this is the section that in a previous autopilot video it kind of freaked out on. So I'm just gonna go through normally. And yeah, no problem this time. And on the previous version of the firmware, um, I actually didn't have a problem with it again. It was just that one time sort of a fluke it seemed like where it kind of got a little bit panicked on what it was supposed to do. So speed limit through here is 35, setting to 40. Now the only other difference that I have noticed in this latest version of the autopilot, and I'm going to jump on the highway real quick just so you can see it, is the, the off-ramp slowdown. Um, it still functions fundamentally the same, which is it sets the traffic aware cruise control speed to a lower speed as opposed to, um, it doesn't give you an indication that the speed limit has changed or that it doesn't give you a little banner at the bottom saying that it's dropping the speed. It just drops the tax speed and it drops it down in increments until it gets down to, depends on the intersection, uh, but most intersections it seems to get down to about 25 miles per hour is where it bottoms out and that's usually if you're approaching a stoplight as a result of taking the exit. Um, in instances where it doesn't do that, um, it might drop down to like 35 or 45. The only difference that I have noticed um, in this latest version with how that behaves is they now appear to have added a visualization to when this happens. So previously you wouldn't get any sort of prompt. Now you get a little bit of a prompt. They, the blue circle around the traffic aware cruise control indicator um, will do like a little rotation animation basically. Speed up, up to here. So what I will do next is I'm going to jump on our local highway and head back to the exit. I've basically taken local roads away from the exit that I started at to the next exit down the highway. So I'm going to hang it right here, jump back on the highway, and then we can watch the traffic aware cruise control animation go through. Speeding up a bit so I can join traffic. I want to hang on the right lane because that's the direction that we're going to be going here pretty soon. And it looks 
looks like we're getting a little bit of rain, so we get to see the auto wipers actually work. So I did have the opportunity to take the car up into the mountains. I don't have any footage from that one because it was a family trip and there would have been a lot of background noise and chatter in any of the video that I would have recorded. But um, we did use the autopilot pretty extensively on a trip to Silverthorn, Colorado over the weekend, uh, two weekends ago, for a wedding that we were attending up in Keystone. And autopilot behaved admirably up in the mountains. No issues whatsoever. And I'll definitely be posting some test videos with demonstration and examples of that. Alright. So we'll join the highway. Car coming up really fast on my left. It's a little too fast there, buddy. Alright, so I'm going to use... Alright, so the lane actually disappeared, so I lost the ability to auto lane change. So instead, what I'm going to do is let the autopilot watch as the lanes merge together, and then it successfully goes into the merge lane. You guys need to slow the hell down. That guy just dumped a double white to go into the carpool lane, which is absolutely illegal. Uh-oh. Let's check the traffic. Not oh, crud. Oh jeez, kidding me? I hope there's not an accident ahead. <laughs> Two thousand years later. All right. Well, we got a little bit waylaid by an accident on the highway. Unfortunately, I hope everyone's all right. But I'm going to go ahead and use the Traffic Aware Cruise Control to take this highway exit. And there's the animation I'm describing. It may be a little bit hard to make out with the resolution of the camera that I've got right now. But you have a little circle animation indicating that the speed has been reduced from what I had it set at. And drops down to, like I said, 25 miles per hour. I'm going to go ahead and take over because that's a little bit fast to take this particular curve. And there we have it. I think that's uh, pretty good for this test. Um, we'll go ahead and run another test once uh, I get the next version, which is actually going to be probably tomorrow at the rate that I'm looking at. So thanks for watching, everybody.